Mahler's 10th symphony was written from beginning to end by Mahler. We have every single bar. We have two and a half movements orchestrated and we have the rest of the piece in a short score with incredible detail, uh, often on four lines. Very occasionally, and particularly when something repeats, there is only a melody line with a few bass notes. But we have Mahler from beginning to end and vintage Mahler at that. I'm going out on a limb here, possibly his profoundest and most moving finale. And I think it would be a tragedy not to perform a piece where there is so much of him. Of course, people have made different, different versions, but it is mostly to do with orchestration, whether you add, and if you, understand that a lot of late Mahler is to do with there being two lines or three lines with a lot of space in between them. You realize that this music doesn't need much filling up. It needs clothing. And of course, he would have clothed it in his incomparable colors. Uh, what Derek Cook and my old mentor Bertolt Goldschmidt did and Colin and David Matthews is a gift beyond price. But no one would pretend that it is exactly how Mahler would have clothed his own music. But you can sit with these sketches which are now available in beautiful printing and are indeed underneath the score. You can sit and you can play one of the great symphonies from start to finish on the piano. Uh, so it's been so much of a, fam a part of my family for so many years. I get angry when people say he didn't complete it because this is very different from these other unfinished pieces or Berg's Lulu, what it was so many other pieces. This has Mahler's whole line. And when you see it, he worked in such a different way. You can tell that he was leaving it there so that someone could finally put it together. And it tells us so much about where Mahler was going, what he was thinking. He was, a, he was 51, he was a young man. The first movement absolutely seems to discover Berg, particularly the world, world of Lulu. The second world is Hindemith in the, in the 1920s. The last movement is God knows what. Uh, such a farewell and uh, such strangeness and such sadness. He watched from a window on a rainy day in New York, a fireman's funeral. And at this time, the fireman's funeral, there was no music. There was just a drum. And he heard just simply the beat of the drum from a, from a distance. This is how the last movement starts with its big tuba solo and these terrifying distant drum beats. And he uses it to make a farewell to the world and a farewell to the symphony. And there's a type of transcendence which even his music, extraordinary as it was before, had never reached. Uh, it's an entirely new emotion at the end of the piece. And these last bars of saying really, leb vol, leb vol. That's really a masterpiece. Uh, it's one of been, has been one of the great privileges of my life to have been involved with it and to help it come to birth. And what Bertolt Goldschmidt said to me at the end of his life, he said, oh, no, it's so wonderful that your generation who had not grown up with the idea that there was an incomplete symphony that shouldn't be touched, that your generation took this and has moved it forward.